Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Kerouac, President and CEO of Bay State Health. As the new year dawns, we find ourselves still battling the COVID-19 pandemic, now featuring the more contagious Omicron variant. Capacity challenges are stressing all our hospitals, despite many successful initiatives to improve throughput and find alternatives to hospital admission. Demands for behavioral health care, particularly among children, a byproduct of the isolation and stress our communities have endured, remain at record highs. Despite aggressive recruitment efforts and the arrival of new hires at a rate of over 100 a week, we still have a long way to go to reach full staffing, with vacancy rates of nearly 15% system-wide. Hundreds of team members have themselves become infected with this new variant. And though most have experienced only mild symptoms thanks to vaccine protection, the absences have strained staffing still further. In this climate of crisis piled upon crisis, it's easy to give way to despair that things will ever get better. However, the final acts of the pandemic tragedy are now coming into sharper focus. I believe that early in 2022, the virus will stop disrupting our lives the way it has these past 22 months. As a society and as an organization, we'll stop being afraid of COVID-19 and we'll put it alongside the other endemic or episodic infections we routinely deal with. The contagiousness of the Omicron variant comes on top of slow but steady progress in our vaccination efforts in the community. This means that soon nearly everyone will have some immune experience with the virus, hopefully through vaccination, but if not, through infection. While it's clear that Omicron causes a lower rate of serious illness than previous variants, the sheer number of infections means that hospitals across the country are admitting record numbers of cases. It pains me to say that we'll likely be in for several more weeks of high demand confronting already exhausted caregivers. But like all pandemics, the current surge will decline and will leave in its wake a population that is nearly totally protected against serious disease. Continuing to promote vaccination and boosters, as well as masking and physical distancing, is the best way to make sure we reach that point quickly, with the least strain on the health system and the least suffering in the community. As we enter the post-pandemic phase, it would be wrong to think that we'll move easily into a comfortable new normal. We as a society, as an organization, and as individuals have been through a prolonged traumatic event. Healing and rebuilding will take work and focus. And we have a good roadmap to follow from models of trauma-informed care used to heal individuals who have been through other terrible personal events. In my view, the elements of this approach applied to organizational renewal should include four key elements. First, trustworthiness. Trust matters, and we don't take it for granted. Our pandemic response has been marked by regular and transparent communications, conveying what's happening and why decisions are being made. Our leadership team is committed to providing clear and timely communications and creating more opportunities to listen to your experiences and learn from them so we can make the best decisions possible and foster mutual trust. Second, safety. We'll continue our investments to advance both patient and employee safety. This includes protection against infection and workplace violence, as well as protection against the moral distress of being stretched beyond what can reasonably be expected in terms of workload. Third, learning and improvement. Bay State Health has a strong history of continually learning and finding ways to advance its care of patients. We need to maintain that strong element of our culture, which invites people at all levels of the organization to be open to and imagine new and better ways of getting the day's work done. This has the additional benefit of giving more control to the teams doing the work, who often have the greatest insight into where the opportunities for improvement lie. And finally, collaboration. Teams that are there for each other, that have each other's backs, have shown greater resilience during the pandemic and create a greater climate of belonging for both seasoned veterans and new recruits. 
Great teams can be formed if we all work to build a sense of togetherness. This is a tone that must be set by leadership through authentic connections, open communication, and reliable follow-through. We're adopting a model of serving leadership that's helping Bay State leaders to focus on extending trust to our teams, listening fully, and fostering innovation and collaboration. For many of us, the work of rebuilding our organization after the traumatic events of the pandemic must begin with processing what we have been through personally. The traditional suck it up mentality that's been so common in the training and socialization of providers doesn't promote a healthy recovery. We know from our employee surveys that our team members are strong at committing to the work and they're also struggling with unplugging and recharging. Acknowledging that we've been through a traumatic event is the beginning. Removing the internal and external stigmas to asking for help can support the creation of an environment where it's safe to express vulnerability and access the support that's available. Adopting personalized ways to get away and renew is a vital element, and encouraging others to do the same helps to create a culture of well-being. Finally, Reframing what constitutes success or failure can help carry us through the toughest of times. This was an essential element for me during my years of caring for patients with HIV and AIDS. Together with the elements of organizational renewal, these steps can give us all a sort of psychological PPE to keep going in what will always be a physically and emotionally demanding calling. I'm extremely grateful for all you've sacrificed and for all you've accomplished over the past two years. I know it hasn't been easy, and yet you've shown up every day with courage and compassion. As we move out of the pandemic phase of COVID-19 and into the long work of healing and recovery, I'd ask you to first take care of yourselves, and second, to take care of each other. I'll continue to do all I can to support your work. Lastly, I'd ask you to maintain your belief in the importance of our work. We can be proud to be part of an organization that has a profound impact on the lives of people in our communities. Dedicating ourselves to the care of all who seek our help is one of the noblest of human endeavors, and we need to keep reminding ourselves and each other that every day we're making a difference. That belief has sustained us through the darkest of days and will help us emerge even stronger as the year unfolds. Thank you.